This video is going to cover the last concept in this lesson, which is how to solve rational inequalities. Now, when solving rational inequalities, you want to follow this general setup for it. You want to first state the excluded values just like we did for rational equations. We do that by looking at when the denominator equals zero. Then what you want to do is treat it like it's an equation. Temporarily, just ignore the inequality. Just treat it like an equation and solve. From there, what you do is you're going to use your excluded values and your solutions, and you're going to divide a number line into intervals using these values. And then we'll test the value in each of these intervals to determine where the inequality is true. So the new concept, the part that's going to be new for us to focus on is how to do step three and how to do step four for solving rational inequalities. The first two repeats of what we've been doing. So let's take a look at an example to help us understand what steps three and four are actually saying. So if we look at the example, x over three minus one over x minus two is less than x plus one over four. The first thing we always do is we try and find our excluded values. Now, if I take a look, there's no variable here or here to solve for, only with x minus 2. So set x minus 2 equal to 0. The excluded value is x equals 2. We're going to come back to this value when we start dealing with the number line. Next, to solve, I said treat it like it's an equation. So we always find a common denominator first and multiply through by that. So if I take a look, I have x minus 2 as my factor in this fraction. These other fractions do not have it. So I know I'm going to need to multiply through by that factor. And now I take a look at the constants. I have a 3 and a 4. Well, the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. And so I'm also going to need to multiply through by 12 to eliminate those two denominators. So let's set up our multiplication here. We're going to multiply the left side of the inequality, and we're going to multiply the right side of the inequality by 12 times the quantity x minus 2. And we're just going to treat it like it is an equation for it. So when I do the distributive property and I distribute the 12 and x minus 2 into the first fraction, I know this x is going to be multiplied by this x minus 2 because it will not cancel on the bottom. But I also have this 12 and this 3. Now the whole point is to cancel out the 3. So what I do is I take a look, you know, what's 12 divided by 3 and that's 4. So really, I have 4x times x minus 2. When I distribute to the second term, the x minus 2s will cancel in the top and bottom. So I'm left with minus 1 times 12. And I'm going to treat it like an equation, so equals. When I distribute here, I know I'm going to have this x plus 1. The x minus 2 is going to stay because it is not in the denominator. And so now I take a look at the 12 and the 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So I have 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So now I'm going to distribute and combine like terms. So I'm going to get 4x squared minus 8x minus 12 equals. Now when I distribute over here, I'm going to distribute these two binomials together first. x times x is going to give me an x squared. x times negative 2 is going to give me a negative 2x. 1 times x gives me a positive 1x. So when I combine those together, I get negative x. And then 1 and negative 2 is negative 2. Now I distribute the 3 to this trinomial, and I will get 3x squared minus 3x minus 6. Since it is a quadratic, I have to set it equal to 0 to solve. What I'm going to do is subtract the 3x squared. 
So 4x squared minus 3x squared is just 1x squared, which is x squared. I would also add the 3x to the linear term, which is negative 8x. So negative 8x plus 3x is minus 5x. And then I would add 6, add my constant to move it to the other side. So negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. So I'm going to factor the trinomial x squared minus 5x minus 6. To do that, I need to know what two numbers multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you negative 5. And that is negative 6 and positive 1. So when I solve each of these, I get x equals 6 and negative 1. Those are not our answers for the inequality. This would be the answer if it were an equation, but it's not. It's an inequality. And so steps 3 and 4 told us, you know, create a number line and divide the number line into intervals using both the excluded values which we only have one, which is two, and our solution, six and negative one. So if this is the number line, let's put it in numerical order. So it goes negative one, then we have our two, and then we have our six. I don't care about the spacing. What we're going to do then is in step four, we pick values in each of these intervals in each of these regions and test them with the inequality to see where a true statement is created. So you want to pick values to the left of negative 1. So you, you go close and small. So I'm going to use negative 2. Between negative 1 and 2, I'm going to use 0. Between 2 and 6, I can use 3. And greater than 6, I'm going to use 7. And so these are my test values. What I do is I plug them into my inequality and determine if it's going to create a true statement. So if I plug in negative 2, x over 3 would be negative 2 thirds. You have minus 1 over negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And that should be less than negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1 fourth. Well, minus a negative is really adding. So I'm taking negative two-thirds and adding one-fourth to it. And that gives me negative five-twelfths. So is negative five-twelfths less than negative one-fourth? And yes, it is. This is true, which means my solution exists to the left of negative one. And so we'll come back to that. Now let's pick a test value, which was to be 0, and plug that in. So if I have 0 divided by 3, it's just 0. Minus 1 over 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. That should be less than 0 plus 1, which is 1, over 4. Well, minus negative is a positive, so is 1 half less than 1 fourth? And that's false. 1 half is greater than 1 fourth. So that tells me this is not part of my solution. Plug in 3. You have 3 divided by 3, which is 1, minus 1 over 3 minus 2. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1. So minus 1 over 1. And that should be less than 3 plus 1 over 4. So 3 plus 1 is 4 over 4. So really you have 1 minus 1 should be less than 1. Is 0 less than 1? And that is true. So that tells me my solution is also in between 2 and 6. We still have to check 7 the same way. Plug it in. So x over 3 is 7 over 3 minus 1 over x minus 2, so 7 minus 2 is 5, should be less than x plus 1, which is 8 over 4. So when doing this, I'm going to have to subtract 7 thirds and 1 fifth as a fraction that is 32 fifteenths. 
8 fourths is really 2. So is 32 fifteenths less than 2? And no, it's greater than 2. And so therefore, my solution does not exist in this region either. So now we go back. It exists over here to the left of negative 1. Since our inequality is not or equal to, we're going to put an open circle on negative 1. And my solution exists to the left of it. That means my x value is less than negative 1. My interval between 2 and 6 is also where I got a true statement. Since 2 is an excluded value, we cannot include it. So that's an open circle. And since we have just less than, no, or equal to, we know that 6 cannot be included either. So the range between 2 and 6 also contains my solution. So that is 2 is less than x, which is less than 6. So my final solution to this rational inequality is that x is less than negative 1 or 2 is less than x, which is less than 6. In other words, x is between 2 and 6. So in this setup, we plugged it in. But in this scenario, you got to be careful. You make sure you use your calculator to determine the values when combining these and see if the sta uh, statement is true or false. Another way you can use your calculator, and we're going to take a look at this, is to check where the true and false statements are. Now, I know you are expected to be able to do this without a calculator, but it's nice to know how to use your calculator to assist you. So what you do is put the left side of the rational inequality in your y1. So go to y equals. Remember, when you type in a fraction, put it inside of a parentheses. So I have parentheses x divided by 3 minus... I have another fraction, so I'm going to do parentheses, 1 divided by, and since I have a binomial denominator, I'm going to do another parentheses, x minus 2. So I have two open parentheses, so I'm going to close them. So I put that in my y1. In my y2, I put the right side of the inequality, so that would be a parentheses, x plus 1 in the numerator, close the parentheses and then divided by 4. y1 contains your left side, y2 contains your right side. Now, I'm not going to graph. What's nice is your table already has all the values of x put in and what the corresponding y values are. So if I go to second table, looking at what the intervals I used were, I know I choose, I use negative 2, so I'm going to scroll down where x is negative 2. And if I take a look at negative 2, y1 is negative 4.167, y2 is negative 0.25. So is this number less than that number? Yes. And I can go and use 0. And so if I go look at 0 for this, is 0.5 less than 0.25? No. And so I know it's false here. I believed I also used, if I take a look, 3 and then 7. So if I go to my calculator, at 3, is 0 less than 1? Yes, it is. And so therefore, I know it's true between 2 and 6. So we could also use our calculator to assist us with checking where the values are true on our intervals and where they are false. And if I go look at 7 as well, scroll down for it. Is 2.1 less than 2? No, it's not. And so I know it's false. So this is a nice way to use your calculator to assist you when solving rational inequality on finding where the intervals are true or false. Let's move on to the last example for it. Same idea. The first thing you want to do is you want to state your excluded values. So my first fraction, 5 over x, my denominator is x, so set that equal to 0. x equals 0 is an excluded value. If I use the 5x, 5x equals 0, I still get x equals 0. So that's my only excluded value. Next is I find my common denominator. I know it's going to have an x. And then I look at the least common multiple of 5 and 3, and that is 15. 
So my common denominator is 15x. So I'm going to multiply the left side and the right side of my inequality by 15x. And when I distribute that, 15x times 5 over x, the x's are going to cancel. So my 5 is only being multiplied by 15. When I distribute to the second term, the x's will cancel. But also, the 15 divided by 5 will give me 3. I'm going to treat it like an equal sign. Distribute on the right side. The 2 is going to be multiplied by, well, the 3 and the 15 will cancel out to give me a 5, so a 5x. So really, I have 15 times 5, which is 75, plus 6 times 3, which is 18, equals 10x. That gives me 93 equals 10x. So x equals, I'm going to go ahead and use the decimal 9.3. This would be the solution if it were an equation, but it's inequality, which means on my number line, I'm going to use my excluded value, which was 0, and my solution, which is 9.3. So I only have three regions I'm going to test, and I have to pick test values. So pick a number close to 0, so that's negative 1. Pick a number close to 0 that's greater than it, it's positive 1. Pick a number that's greater than 9.3, and that's 10. And so then we just plug them in and we take a look. So I have 5 over negative 1 plus 6 over 5x, which is going to be negative 5, should be greater than 2 thirds. So I have negative 5 minus 6 fifths. Is that greater than two thirds? Well, if you think about it, you take a negative and subtract a positive from it, it's going to get smaller. So negative five minus six fifths is not greater than two thirds. So that's false. This is not where my solution is. So now I'm going to try plugging in one for it. So I have five over one plus 6 over 5 times 1, which is 5, should be greater than 2 thirds. So really, I have 5 plus 6 fifths. Is that greater than 2 thirds? Well, you have a positive adding a positive, of course. It's increasing. You're starting at 5 and adding 6 fifths to it, of course, is greater than 2 thirds. So that's true. Remember, 0 is our excluded value, so it's going to contain an open circle. We cannot have that value. Then I look at my inequality. It is not or equal to, so I will use an open circle as well here. So my solution, I know one of them, is between 0 and 9.3. I still need to test this region, however. So I plug in 10. I have 5 over 10 plus 6 over 5 times 10, which is 50. You know, is that greater than 2 thirds for it? And so I take a look. 5 over 10 is 1 half. 6 over 50 is 3 over 25, and we simplified. Is that greater than 2 thirds? So if I were to take a look, I really have 1 half, which is 0.5, and I have 3 over 25, which is really 0.12. So I have 0.5 plus 0.12. You know, 2 thirds is 0.6 repeating. So this is 0.62. Is that greater than 0.6 repeating? And that is false. It is not. So my only solution that I need to worry about is here. Your x value is between 0 and 9.3, not including those. Again, if you wanted, you could use your calculator to find out where the intervals are true and false based off of picking your test values between your solution and your excluded value. So this is how you solve your rational inequalities. Do the same step. Find your excluded value, your common denominator. Multiply through by it. Treat it like an equation. 
get you what your answer would be if it were an equation. Use that value and your excluded value to mark the values on the number line, and then pick test points in there to see where true statements are created when you plug those values in. Where it's true is where your solution exists.